in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in his life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, 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 power wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, 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 power wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. In the precious blood of the Lamb. In the precious blood. It's a real pleasure to, to be with you today and talk about the beginning, when things happened. The purpose of humanity is the title of our lesson today. It is taken uh, out of Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and verses 26 through 31. Verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and he called the darkness night. Then there was an evening and a morning. Day one was complete. Think about that. We have one God. We believe in the God that we just read about. We know that he selected the children of Israel as his favorite children. God didn't have grandchildren, everyone's a child. The Israelites disappointed him time and again, but nonetheless, this was his favorite people. And so they believed in the one God but that was not prevalent in that time. You may recall when the Babylonians came in and overthrew them, burned the temple down, took all the gold and ornaments and all the other precious metals and things they had, took it back to Babylon with them. What was it the Babylonians did? Well, the creation story for them was noted by a fellow by the name of Enuma Elish. He described a great battle for the supremacy among the gods. And guess what? Tiamat, T-I-A-M-E-T, -E she was an evil goddess, and so she attempted to rule as chief deity of all the gods. Well, then the god Marduk, he rose up and he killed Tiamat. Then he became the chief god. Now this is what was in the Babylonian scriptures. Where's Babylonia? Modern day Iraq. That's what they believed. Today, we have a group of Muslims there throughout. In fact, all the area that that Paul established churches in, in Turkey, is now Muslim territory. 
Then God said, let there be light. Can you, can you think of that? Just think of that. And he snapped his fingers and the light occurred. And there was light. There was darkness. By faith, we understood that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen is made from things that are not seen. There was no light. Light became. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? That's what we believe. That's recorded in Hebrews 11, 3. In John chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, identifies the Word of God as Jesus. So we know that when God was present, the earth was formed by his creation through the Word, which was Jesus. And in verse 2 here, it also says, And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So there's our trinity there. The Apostle John added this statement. He said, apart from him, not one thing that was created that has been created. That came about in Colossians 1, 16 and 17. Paul also indicated that the son's involvement in the work of creation. In verse 2, again, we see the person of the Spirit to complete the Trinity. God's people were called children of light. Unbelievers were in the darkness. Verse 26 says, that, Then God said, let, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. They, male by male, they will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creations that crawl on the earth. So that God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created male and female. How about that? He didn't say there was an LGBTQ. He said he created them male and female. And it's time we recognize that. Today in Congress, the House of Representatives is getting a bill ready for equality. Equality of the sexes. That means that a man can say he's a woman and then he's com he can compete in sporting events for women. Not only that, he can start using a woman's bathroom. Now, we sort of chuckle at that. In 1974, Mary Ruth and I started on our trip with our friends, Dean and Sue Godwin. Dean worked for me. They also travel with us often. We went to Zurich. We stayed there for a little while and we went on into Yugoslavia. Well, while we were in Zurich, in Switzerland there, we were downtown doing something, so I went off and went to the bathroom. They call them water closets, I think, let me see. So at any rate, I walked in and there was a lady sitting there at a desk and she had her little thing out for coins. So I'm reaching in my pocket to get coins and I looked around and I realized I was the only man standing there. So I made a beeline to get out of there, but I thought I better put on my coolest look here. <laughs> I just screwed up real bad. So I walked out and my friend Dean, he was in a frenzy. He was busy searching for something. I said, Dino, what works the matter with you, boy? He said, I can't find my camera. So? It's in there. Yeah, I know it, but I need it now. Oh, I, he said, you just came out of the woman's bathroom and I knew if I didn't get a picture of it, the guys at the office wouldn't have believed me. How about that? Sometimes we men <laughs> don't use our heads or our eyes or something because some of you probably walked in the wrong bathroom too. 
I've done it more than once, I'm ashamed to say, but that has happened. But to consider that a regular pattern, don't think God intended that when he created male and female. If we are children of the light, then we need to look and look intently on our creation. God created us in his image. We have an intellect. We can reason. We can think about things and think through them. We also have to recognize God is an emotional God. Think about that. Time after time on the journey from out of Egypt, the Israelites rebelled. Why did we leave Egypt? We had plenty of water. We don't have any now. So Moses gave them water. Next thing was, we need something more to eat. So God created manna made out of coriander seed. And every day there was a supply, except on Sunday. Saturday, they had enough for two days for those wise enough to know that, and some didn't. They didn't listen. They didn't know that. So I'm sure God got angry with them, especially when 12 of the, their elite tribes went in to survey the land that God had promised them. And 10 of them came back and said, uh-uh, we can't do that. Why, some of those people are so big, we look like grasshoppers in front of them. And so God said, you won't see it. You will never see this land you're supposed to possess. Only Joshua, yeah, Joshua, who fought the battle of Jericho, he was one that God said, you can go. And Caleb, because these were two of the spies that said, we can go take them. Now, by the time Joshua and Caleb entered the promised land, it had been some 40 years. Those two fellows had the best deal on Social Security we'll ever hear about because they, everybody underneath them was 40 years or younger. But that doesn't happen very often. Today in America, we keep hearing about the fact that we receive an entitlement. Well, that's no entitlement. Every one of you and I put our own money in and the company we work for matched it. And so, yeah, we're entitled to it. We put it in there. And so we should be getting it back. But more and more, we have more seniors like me and like many of you that are listening today. God gave us a mind. Now, yes, God could get angry, but God also could be joyful. When John the Baptist baptized Jesus, he had first made it clear to his followers. He said, there is one coming after me I'm not even worthy enough to tie his shoes. But Jesus said, you need to baptize me. And he did. And God said, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. And God smiled upon that prospect. And so we have the opportunity to use the things that God uses. In verse 28, it says, God blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every creature that crawls on the earth. God also said, look, I've given you every seed-bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth. And every tree whose fruit contains seed, this will be food for you. Verse 30 says, For all the wildlife of the earth, for every bird of the sky, for every creature that crawls on the earth, everything having the breath of life in it, I have given you 
green plant for food. Before the flood, Adam and Eve and those after him, they were vegetarians. Do you know that? They didn't eat meat. Only after the flood was Noah and his sons and their wives, they started eating meat. And if you look at this, you can see right here, it says, He gave them every seed bearing plant on the first on the surface of the earth that has seed in it. This will be food for you. For who? The fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. These are the words of God to his creatures. When God made us in his image, according to his likeness, our likeness, scripture says in verse 26, he made it possible for us to rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. And he created him in the image of God. And he created them male and female. Friends, we live in a different world today. God gave us the intellect to think things through. Many people have. I mentioned to you about going to a Protestant service, funeral, over a year ago. And at the time there, we were in a church and this church was trying to decide on whether or not they were uh, they're going to accept gays, lesbians, same-sex marriage, except there's clergy in that same capacity. And one of the fellows there said, uh, what we got to do is get modern, folks. I mean, we, we got to get caught up with the times. Friends, the times haven't changed. God created male. He created female. Today, yes, we, <laughs> we eat meat. But think about God's creation what he did for us. In his book called Foresight, a chemist by the name of Marcos Eberlin wrote this. He wrote about the complexity of the human cell. He said, if you were to bid this demanding, multifaceted job of designing a cell, he did this out to the most technologically advanced engineering firms in the world, their top engineers might either laugh in your face or run screaming into the night. The requisite technology is far beyond our most advanced human knowledge. Think about that. God's creation. include cells. We have cells. Everlyn pretty much put a hammer on the head of that nail. We're not even capable today of creating that. Oh, someday somebody might. But we sit and review things that are perhaps not as important Yes, I'm concerned about this amendment for equality because it means equality in a different way. It is not scriptural. We know that we don't live in a time where scripture is totally accepted, yet I find it most interesting that the Bible makes more sales every year than any other book. Interesting, isn't it? 
And yet, are we reading the Bible? Are we studying it? Are we following the things that are in the Bible? Because the Bible clearly says he made us male and female, and he did so in his image, which means we have the capacity to think and that's something that is important. As we think things through, we have to accept certain things. As a, a child, even as a 12-year-old belonging to the church, I didn't understand the Trinity. I didn't think much about it, but I didn't understand it. Today, I'm not sure that I need to understand it. What I need to do is recognize the fact that there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the gift Jesus left for us, for me, for you, is that we have a spirit that dwells within us. And we can consult that spirit 24-7 because our best friend is always available. There was an old song written many, many years ago. I just call upstairs when I'm lonely. It doesn't cost a nickel or a dime. Friends, there, God never has a busy signal. Never. He's never too busy to listen to you and me. He created us so that we could come to him. He wants us to. Out of his grace, he did things for us. We have scriptural text of a number of his wonderful creations here, of men in particular, and some women who have done wonderful things, whom he loved dearly. David was one of them. And yet, truthfully, we know David was not a good father. I mean, think about it. He had one of his sons rape his half-sister. He had the brother of that half-sister wait two years and then kill him for doing it. And then the same one, a son, tried to kill his own father by rebelling against him and claiming the kingship. Then Solomon, the richest man mentally that we read about in the scripture, the wisest, he had people killed as well within his own family, one of his brothers. Because the brother asked for the teenage girl that slept with David when he was old. David wasn't having sex with this girl at that time. But she kept him warm. Uh, today we <laughs> we have a lot of other ways that you can stay warm. Electric blankets, blah, 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 blah. But Solomon did that. So this was David's byproduct. David committed adultery. David committed murder. So friends, there's nothing we can do that's any worse than what David did. What we can do is recognize that as David did, we can seek forgiveness and God is gracious enough to give it to us. We have one God and he can pardon us and he will if we simply ask for it. As we move on into our spring-like weather, and I hope that you enjoyed this week, and I hope you'll enjoy the weeks to come. Yes, we still got some pollen. It's going to fall. That's part of the course, I think, in today's world. We can get through that. You don't have to track it into your house a time or two and into your cars, but that's okay. Remember, we serve a God who can and does do anything. And even though we fail at times, if we seek God and we ask for forgiveness, he will always give it to us. And I pray that you will join me in praying for our country, and for help in our daily living. Father in heaven, it is so good to be in your presence this morning. And we pray that you will be with each one of us and that as we seek you, 
you will do the best you can with your help we know that we can bring America into the type of country it was when our nation was first formed where we recognized you we need to do that now for those who do not we know that we have sinned, but we are grateful that you can forgive us. And we thank you for that, Lord. And we thank you for all the things we've done. We've had a year unlike any other year, and you know it only too well. And you've heard our prayers, and you know that some of us are stressed out about it. But we pray that you'll give us some relief in time and that you'll help us through this because we know that your word means something, and we know that you will. And we ask that you put your blessing on all of our brothers and sisters who are with us this, this morning. And that you will provide healing for those that need it, comfort for those that need it, and just great insight in today's world. We thank you and we praise you for that. And we do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Look forward to seeing you next week.